everybody, me and Mac with another video, and today we're bringing you uh, another episode in my various varietal series. I promised you a uh, red after the after the um, um, not was a video after the Riesling video, and here it is. We're going to talk about a Zinfandel for you. Uh, I've got five different Zinfandels here to taste. Maybe there'll be more than that. Probably not. I think I'm gonna probably stick with this. Three from California, but three very different ones from California. One from Italy, where it's known as Primitivo and uh, one from Rust in uh, the Okanagan in British Columbia, which is, I think, my favorite in you know, BC, it's in by a mile. And we're starting with this one here. So this was actually gifted to me by my uh, niece-in-law and nephew-in-law. They are big fans of it. They wanted me to taste it and see what, see uh, if I liked it. Cypress Vineyard Zinfandel 2018. It's from the Central Coast in California. Alcohol, 13.5% by volume. Okay, so uh, if you watch this channel, I've, I've reviewed some Zins in the past, I'm sure. And uh, sometimes they're delicious. California Zins are really hit and miss thing for me. Uh, one that's great, it's incredible. But it can quite often be really cloying and jammy and kind of cheap feeling almost. And here I have the, one of the ones they have here is Camus, which is, if you guys know Camus, that you know, they use oak, and they love oak, and the Zinfandel is no different. For me, it works a little better than Zinfandel than it does in their cab, uh, but that's just my opinion. And actually, I we usually really enjoy uh, Camus Zin, but we'll see. So this one here, this is 2018, so it's going on six years old. It doesn't really smell that old. It's really intense. In fact, when I was uh, before I even got to the glass, uh, it smelled like a uh, kind of a traditional California Zin, really jammy and intense, like blueberry jam and blackberry jam and. <sighs> It's a, it, it's a hint of like a, a, a mushroomy f um, smell that you might get from from the age of it. it. Doesn't smell bad, but really it's mostly just jam. Blueberry jam, blackberry jam, boysenberry jam, pick a jam. Is that your jam? Okay. All right, let's taste it. Let's see what we think here. Well, so that's interesting. It's not jammy at all in the palate. So it's a little more herbaceous than you might expect. Some dried, let's say dried thyme, dried rosemary, black plum, blackberry. Drier than I expected it to be. So it's not what I thought it was going to be. Pouring it into the into the decanter, I knew it was going to be like all those fifteen dollars Zinfandels you get. Not that this is fifteen bucks; it's more than that. But you know, fifteen dollars Zinfandels you get from California. There's a whole bunch of them sit on the BC liquor store shelves, and they are like a well, they they smell like this. It smells like that. Jammy, jammy, jammy. They also taste very jammy and almost sweet. Not sweet, really, but uh, very intense jam notes on the palate. This is not like that on the palate at all. The nose is exactly what I thought it would be. The palate is quite different. Acidity's medium. Tannins are medium. It's very dry. There's a little hint of like a red currant there as well. Hmm. You know, I'm just a little confused by how different it tastes than what I thought it was going to taste like. But it's not bad. Medium finish. Medium, medium, the medium minus the medium finish. Drops off pretty quickly. 
That's not bad at all. So yeah, um, that's a decent bottle of wine. It's not the kind that I would reach for if I was going down and buy a California Zin. Mind you, I think this is about $20 and I don't buy $20 in Fidel from anywhere. And that's just because that's not my, it's not really my thing. Um, when I do buy Zinfandel, it's usually, um, I'm looking for like a really fantastic bottle of wine. Hoping we have a few of those here. Uh, not this one, this is cheap. But the other three are what, pricier anyway. Um, this one especially, I think is 50-ish, I think. And this is more, more than that. Uh, and I'm okay to pay that for the quality usually we get. I don't know about these two yet, we'll see, but it should be pretty good. Anyway, one more. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I love it. I like it. It's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good bottle of wine. It's not what I thought it was going to be. But it's perfectly good. It's not exciting. But there's nothing wrong with it. I'll give it 84 points. Perfectly decent bottle. Um, I, I'm going to drink this today uh, and, uh, and, and enjoy it to a certain level at least. Um, it's not my thing, but I can understand why some people would really like this bottle. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, Luca Relli, 2021 Primitivo from the Puglia region in Italy. Primitivo is what they call Zinfandel in Italy. This is the youngest of all the wines. It's also the cheapest of all the wines. It's not really meant to age long term. Doesn't mean it can't. So it's really not a jammy zin at all. There's a little bit of black fruit there, but it's also a little bit of, uh, hmm, what we got here? Definitely mushroom and like earth, forest floor, a little bit of funk there. Black plum. Hmm. Is it, you would never, I would never blind taste and guess this is infidel. I mean, you can count the number of Italian infidels I've had on one hand and probably have three fingers and a thumb left over. I believe I've had this particular bottle years ago. A different vintage, of course. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. That is uh, it's jammy on the on the palate and on the nose. So then the reverse of the last one. But not like California's in jammy. Mm. Dry. Cinnamon's medium. Tanninger medium, finish is medium to medium plus. Nice finish. Still going there. Blackberry jam. So it's black blackberry jam. I said that already. Boysenberry. A lot of like brambly dark fruit there. Um, it's not particularly sophisticated, but wouldn't expect that at, at this price point, right? But it's a perfectly good wine. Um, good value for the money, I would say. It is it's a nice medium plus to long finish. Really good. But it's really pleasurable. But I still haven't trouble describing any of the flavors for you. So it's not very complex, but it's not just a tub of blackberry jam either. Some black plum, black currant cassis, I think. Um, there's like a hint of blueberry and some on the finish, if you wait long enough, you're getting some dried 
thyme and rosemary. Some nice green herby notes. Not like uh, not like bell pepper green or jalapeno green, but like dried herbs. Yeah, that's nice, you know, that's, is it exciting? More so than the last one, because it's different. It's not what I expected. It's, it's perfectly decent. Uh, it's a good, it could be a good everyday red for someone who likes this type of wine. Nothing wrong with that at all. I would score that 86 points. It is uh, a good wine and it's uh, great at that price point. And uh, it's probably pairs really well with, um, it's not overly jammy, it probably pairs, pairs really well with a lot of uh, meat dishes, a lot of braised stews or, um, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, but it's, it's enjoyable. It, this, it could even be a patio supper, I think. I don't think it even needs food. Yeah, perfectly good bottle indeed. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy that. All right, what's up next? Okay, I'm going to do the two uh, other California ones side by side. You see I've got 2018 Zinfandel from Camus, and this one is 2019 Old Vine Zinfandel High Wire Vineyard from Hartford. This is from the Russian River Valley. That one is from Napa Valley. Um, if you are a regular reader of my blog or, and uh, follow my vlog, you will undoubtedly know how much we uh, love Hartford wines. Usually, they're almost always of very high quality. And there's Zinfandel. Um, Zinfandel has been our favorite Zinfandel anywhere. As far as I, mean, I can't remember ever having Zin better than at least one or two of these Hartfords have been amazing. I haven't had this one yet though, so holy cow. Uh, oof. That smells intoxicating. 2019, eh? Wow. All right, so. Let's see how these compete. I'm going to do the Hartford one first because I, I think we all know Camus wine tend to be pretty oaky and intense and jammy. And I think this will be uh, more subtle. I don't want to get lost after the Camus. So here we go. So, oh, Blackberry and Cassis. Uh, pepper, black pepper. Uh. Black plum, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, it's quite peppery. I find that interesting. The blackberry, uh, it's, it's, I'm gonna say, I was gonna call it blackberry jam, but it's not jammy. Maybe I've got a blackberry compote. <laughs> How different is that? Okay, that smells amazing. Let's, let's dive in and see what it tastes like. Mouth-watering acidity. Mm. All the black fruits. Well, I can't get over how acidic it is, how high the acid is. I just, it, it might just need to open up a little bit. It's, um, mm. I just opened these, <coughs> excuse me, five minutes ago. I did get them both in aeration and obviously they're canning now, but it hasn't been very long. It's almost what you call pop and pour. Mm. So that's, that's a lovely wine. It's not going to measure up to the great Zinfandel. But I think I had one of those like 95, 96 points too, uh, which was it was the best Zinfandel I've ever had. Um, I was hoping this would be as good as that. It's not, but it's still very good. Uh, blackberry, like a uh, black raspberry, maybe even red raspberry, definitely raspberry. Pepper, a little peppery notes there. Medium to medium plus finish, drops off a little bit. Um, yeah, it's very good, it's very, very good, but it, it doesn't measure up to the great.
you know, it's it, it's a lovely style of of Zinfandel. No question about it. I get that 93 points. It is a lovely, lovely wine. I very much enjoy that. Um, but <laughs> this sounds stupid. It's a little disappointing for 93 point wine, just because I remember that one, that one. Okay, but still gorgeous. All right, let's go over to Camus now. Oh, oak. <laughs> I wonder if it says anything about the oakiness here. It's obviously oaked. It's not as intensely oaky as the cab is, for sure. So I'll just do the rest of the video with red wine all over my shirt. All right, so this is, so blackberry, again, it's the flavor, uh, the nose is similar, but this is much more jammy. So this is more black, blackberry jam and blueberry jam. Boysenberry jam. Ooh, I poured too much in this glass. It spills all over myself. <laughs> mm, okay, let's taste it. Okay, so much more fruit forward, much more intense flavors. Um, and here's where the oak comes in. So blackberry jam, blueberry, vanilla, coconut. There's a slight peppery quality there, but not as much so as in the Hartford. Acidity's medium plus. Tannins are more intense. When you're older, um, tannins are medium plus to high. They were more like medium, medium plus here. Uh, good wine too, though. Wow. So I wish I could. I wish you could taste these with me, because it's really you know it, it's both two California Zins. They both got some age on them a few years. Uh, well, five and four years, um, and but they couldn't be much different. Much more different, um, you know. Western River Valley, Napa Valley. Obviously, this is hotter and it brings up more intense flavors. And I know they oak it pretty good. Fourteen point eight percent alcohol does not show. I I can't believe I'm reading this. Sixteen point one percent alcohol. I can't believe that. It might be the most high, highest alcohol zin I've ever seen. It doesn't show either. I don't get it. No, very well integrated, um, very well balanced, because neither one of these I would think would have been over 13 and a half percent alcohol. Yeah, that's very good. I know there's a little bit of, I'm getting now some, uh, Flavors of like a little bit of, I was going to say milk chocolate, but then I was going to say dark chocolate, and maybe it's in between. Milky chocolate? I don't know. What's in between milk and dark chocolate? Is there such a thing? Um, it's a little bit of chocolatey, but it's not, uh, it, it's not quite what a dark chocolate would be. I don't know. More closer to milk, I think. Hmm. Oh, it's, it's really good too. Um, hmm. I will score that 93 points. Uh, it couldn't be much more different, but it is equally delicious. Um, and I urge people who hear the word Camus and go, eh, I didn't know it was out there. I'm sure some of them watching, people watching this are like that. Um, if you can find this, give it a chance, because this is not just, this is not their cab. It is not, um, I like Camus Cab. I understand why some people don't like it. I don't love it. It's not my favorite style, but I, I like it. And if someone brings me a Camus Cab, I'm never going to refuse it. Um, but this is much better. It's much more representative 
uh, of the, the varietal of Zinfandel that I think their cab is. Their cab is so oaky, right? Uh, and this is not oh, it's over the top oak. It's very good. I highly recommend both these wines. If you can find Hartford Zinfandel, you can get it from the website, Hartford Court. It's Hartford Court or Hartford Family Winery. Sometimes the logo up here says Hartford Court, and down here it says Hartford Family Winery. So I don't really know what the difference is. In fact, I had, I had saw them explain it once. It didn't. It was just basically two different names. Uh, it wasn't like a quality thing. Some of the Hartford Court wines are amazing. It was not that. It's just they just call it differently. But if you can find that that wine, all those in are delicious, and maybe you'll find the one that I did a few years ago. Okay, one more to go. I'm going to clean my shirt and then um, do the next one. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to finish up in BC here. Uh, and I chose that for a reason. This is a 2019 Zinfandel Golden Mile Bench Rust Wine Company. So I want to send this video out as a tribute to Kane Morgan. He's the uh, general manager, the very first employee of Rust Wine Company. And sadly, he passed away recently um, in an automobile incident. Um, I didn't know Kane really well, but I knew him fairly well. Um, he was a wonderful guy. He took amazing care of us when we were up at the winery, which I think we maybe, maybe, I was maybe in his presence five times. Um, emailed him several times about other things. He couldn't have been nicer, couldn't have been more helpful. Um, he knew about my wife's health challenges. We were up there visiting during COVID and they took us, and they, they, they were taking care of everybody. They took extra special care of us. Uh, every time he, we, he saw us, he, knew, he remembered us, he knew where we lived. Um, he was a, uh, what you expect in a hospitality manager. Um, and uh, my heart goes out to his wife and his children. And I know it's been a really tough time at Rust the last little while since he passed. Um, and we're um, very sad uh, to hear of his, of his passing. So this is by far my favorite BC Zin. And I've really tried a few. There's not a whole bunch of them out there. Um, and I hadn't been very impressed with BC Zins. I don't believe I've had this exact vintage yet, 2019, but I have had uh, 17, I think 18, they don't do it every year. Uh, but and then uh, actually the first time we were at the winery, um, we were doing a tasting and Kane came, came up and introduced himself and asked uh, if we'd ever had BC's in. And I kind of was like, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, he said, you gotta try this one. And yeah, he was right. It was, it's spectacular. Okay, so yeah, so uh, very black, black fruit, black plum, blackberry, but there's a lot of herbs there too, like a fresh, fresh rosemary and thyme and dill. Mm. Like a tiny hint of coconut, maybe even. Mm. Oh, this, and the, the, the winery, or the label, it's got a lot of good information. The planting, suitcase clone, 2002, 333 meters of elevation. Uh, the dirt, fluvial fan of gravelly clay and eroded mountain rock, so if that's important to you. Uh, aged in 10 months, 40% new American slash French oak, harvested November 1st, 2019, unfined and unfiltered. Um, so, let's taste it, see if it's as good as it usually is. Mm. I, I believe the first time I was up there, Somewhere, it may have been Kane, somebody else mentioned that how this was a perfect pairing. Maybe I read it somewhere. Perfect pairing with a rosemary crusted prime rib. I thought that was a pretty specific thing to, to say. So the first time I had it, I had it with rosemary crusted prime rib, and he was, they were right. It was spectacular. Um, the herbs, it, it, it just it finishes forever. It is uh, all the black fruit, and but it's not jammy like so many of the zins that you taste. Um, it's it's sophisticated. It's it's intense, but not in a jammy way. It's got uh, black plum and blackberry and blueberry, and um, like dried sage and maybe sagebrush, dried thyme, um, and there's something else there too. Mm. 
earth, it's a little earthy, a little earthy, a bit of a, almost a, almost a forest floor thing, I mean, maybe that's going too far, but there's an earthiness to it. Um, anyway, it, it's lovely, it, it's been my favorite bee season forever, um, I hope somebody else comes up with one as good as this one day, I'd like to try it, uh, but it really is delicious, no question about it. Uh, I give that 91 points, that is a beautiful bottle of wine. Um, and I think that's probably pretty similar to what I've scored their other ones in the past. They you seem to be in the low 90s uh, all the time. It's such a good wine. Mm. Oh, yeah, delicious. So I hope you uh, found some Zins for you to try out today. Um, uh, I have there's a few more videos coming up still. Obviously, I'm still in the middle of three or four of them. I'll get them out as soon as I can. Um, Kane, this is for you. Until next time, drink great wine. See you soon.